This is the first video on revision of A-level binomial expansions. These videos are aimed then at students who are doing A-level courses or equivalent mathematical courses. The intention is not so much to teach binomials as to demonstrate how you might solve typical problems that come up in examinations. However, before we do that, we need some videos to remind students of what a binomial expansion represents and what we mean by the coefficients for different terms. And so in this video, we can demonstrate that the coefficients follow a well-defined pattern. If you're happy with all of these and you want questions, go straight to video three. So what is a binomial expansion? In simple terms, you can use a binomial expansion when you have something in brackets to an integer power. So here's an example. You can see I've got brackets 1 plus x and I'm putting it to the power 4. 4 is an integer. Or brackets 2 plus x with an integer power 6. Or brackets 3 minus 4x here with a power being 7. Or a minus x to the power 10 or a plus bz to the power 8. Now the key thing to notice is of course this last one is the most general form and you will sometimes get things of this form. You notice there's an unknown constant a, an unknown constant b and some sort of variable z and an integer power but it's still a binomial expansion because it has the right form. Now it's unlikely you will get something like this which has three terms in it so we're not going to deal with those. Now we need to be able to find general expressions for these binomial expansions and what I'm going to suggest is you use the most general formulation possible because that actually reduces what you have to learn and understand. You only have to do one set of formula. So this is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to do the binomial expansion for a plus b to the power n. Now clearly to answer any given question all you need to do is substitute in for a, b and n. So if I give an example, if you had something like 2 minus x to the power 7, then what you'd be doing is you'd be saying 2 equals a minus x equals b and n equals 7. So wherever in your expansion you had an a, you'd put 2. Wherever you had a b, you'd put minus x. And wherever you had an n, you would put 7. So I would recommend just use this formula and you'll find it's a lot easier to answer whatever questions come up, no matter what their form. Note here, however, you will find quite a few examples, but not all, but quite a few examples you get in papers will give you a equals 1. Bonomials with low values of n, then. It's worth deriving the bonomials for low n longhand, as this helps understand the sort of forms that you get later. So, for example, if I've got a plus b squared, now squared is the simplest you can get, clearly that's a plus b times a plus b. Now you could do this yourself, you could very quickly demonstrate this gives you a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared, or if I combine common terms, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So there's the binomial expansion where you've got a power of 2. What happens then if we have a power of 3? So now I want a plus b cubed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that as a plus b squared times a plus b. Because if I do that, I can use the result from the previous page where I've already expanded a plus b squared. So now a plus b cubed is the same as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared all times a plus b. Now if you write this out, what you'll find is you get a cubed, and clearly that's from doing the a squared here times the a, and then you're going to get an a squared b term. Now if you look at the a squared b terms, you'll see you're going to get this a squared multiplied onto this b, and you're going to get this 2ab multiplied onto that a. So what you're going to end up with is 1 plus 2. Next, I'm going to do the a b squared terms. And if I look at the a b squared terms, if I use black, you'll see you get this one multiplied on this one, 
and this one multiplied on this one. So you end up with 2 plus 1. And then finally, you end up with b cubed. So you end up with a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So there's your binomial expansion if the power is 3. And you're probably thinking, yeah, I can manage that. Not too hard. What happens if we go to 4? Now I can do the same pattern again. I can say a plus b to the power 4 is the same as a plus b cubed times a plus b. And of course I already know a plus b cubed because I've just worked that out. And so now I can multiply these out. Now I'm going to do this directly. You can do it slower if you want. You get a to the 4 plus 4 a cubed b plus 6 a squared b squared plus 4 a b cubed plus b to the 4. Now if you don't believe me, pause this video and multiply it out yourself just to confirm you're happy that can be done. Now the key reason we've done this is to ask can you see a pattern developing? So what I'm going to do is overlay all these answers together. So we had a plus b, okay, and we're going to say is there a pattern in the coefficients? So next we did a plus b squared and this is what we got, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Then we did a plus b cubed, and this is what we got, a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Then we did a plus b to the power 4, and this is what we got. And so the question is, is there a pattern here? So what I'm going to do is write down just the coefficients. So if you're saying, what do I mean by the coefficients? You'll see I'm multiplying a by 1, I'm multiplying b by 1. So I've written 1 and 1. Here, I'm multiplying a squared by 1 b squared by 1. So you see I've put a 1 and a 1 and then I'm multiplying a b by 2 so I've put a 2. The next one I've got a 1 times a cubed, a 3 times a squared b, a 3 times a b squared and a 1 times b cubed and you see the coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1 and obviously for the last one you'll see the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4 and 1. So all I've done here is use a sort of grid to mark how the coefficients change. So here I had n equals 1, then I had n equals 2, then I had n equals 3, and so on. Now why is that useful? If you look at this grid, what you'll notice is the coefficients are the sum of the two coefficients above. So if you look at this 2, you'll see it's come from 1 plus 1. If you look at this 3, you'll see it's come from 2 plus 1. If you look at this 3, you'll see it's come from 2 plus 1. If you look at the 4 down here, you'll see it's come from 3 plus 1. If you look at this 6, you'll see it's come from 3 plus 3, and so on. So I'm not going to prove why that's the case, and you don't need to prove that for A-level, but it is a useful insight, because what this means is if you wanted you could now say, right, I can easily find the expansion for n equals 5 without doing all this long multiplication just by doing this table. So I write a 1 here, and then 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 4 plus 6 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then a 1. And so now you know the co coefficients for a plus b to the power 5 without doing any difficult computation at all. However, the key thing is it would be rather tedious if you had to use this method to go up to say n equals 10 and beyond. So it's a useful insight um, and what it tells us is there's a well-defined pattern. So in summary, in order to write down an expression for a plus b to the power n, we need to find the coefficients of the different terms. And so we found there's a coefficient of a to the n is 1, we've got a coefficient and I've called it f1n, okay, so n because the power is n and the 1 because I'm doing n a to the n minus 1 times b. And then I've got a coefficient f2 comma n, the 2, because I've got a to the n minus 2 times b squared, and the n again, because it's a plus b to the n. And then we've got f3 n, and you'll see that's a to the n minus 3 times b cubed, and so on. And so our real challenge when we're doing our binomial expansion is to ask ourselves, what are these coefficients? Now we know they have a very strict pattern. 
and so we can write them down easily for the squared term f12 is 2 for the cube term f13 is 3 f23 is 3 and for the fourth power f14 is 4 f24 is 6 f34 is 4 and so on but what we haven't done is said okay what happens for a more general and much larger n so what the next video do is, is going to say, OK, how can we find what these coefficients are for a much larger value of n?